Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Mr. Myers here, and today I'm talking to you about power series and geometric power series. So, this is a uh, seven four BC calculus, calculus extended. <clears throat> Let's talk about a power series. Now, a power series is a series that has variable terms. So, for instance, one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. The x is a variable. The terms are variables. That's called a power series. Now, in this case, this is a geometric power series, and a geometric power series, the series is going to converge. Now, of course, it's only going to converge if the x variable is uh, is something. Well, let's think about that something. Um, what do you know is true about geometric power geometric series? In a geometric series, the r the r has to be between negative one and one. So we have to have the absolute value of r needs to be less than one. Now, in this case, our variable actually is r. So, um, well, our variable is not r, but our variable x represents r. So, in this case, um, in order for this to con converge, in order for it to converge, the absolute value of x has to be less than or less than one, which means that x has to be between one and negative one. This has to be true for it to converge. This little interval right here, that interval where the x value allows the the power geometric power series to converge that's called the interval of convergence all right the ioc down in the ioc <laughs> interval of convergence all right so uh if in fact this geometric series does converge it's going to converge uh using the geometric um, formula there which is a sub 1 over 1 minus r in this case a sub 1 is 1 and 1 minus r is going to be 1 minus x so this is this is essentially what this is going to converge to all right so uh, what this really means is that uh, for these x values in which this inner in this interval of convergence f of x the function 1 over 1 minus x can be written really as the power series um, with a sigma notation and is zero to infinity of x to the n. All right, so really we can take a function and write it as a as an infinite series. All right, so let me tilt this down just a little bit so I can write. All right, so let's take a look at some examples here. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to find a power series for each of these functions. We're going to show four terms and the general term and we're going to write these in sigma notation now on the AP exam you don't necessarily need to write them in sigma notation but you will need to write out the terms with the little dot 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 and the most important thing here is that you write in the uh, nth term so we know what the general form is for your series we're also going to give the interval and convergence for each of these okay so let's go and look at number one here f of x, zoom it in really big here, f of x equals 1 over 1 plus x. Now this here is a geometric series, and in this case, uh, a is equal to 1, right? We got there's a is equal to 1, and we know it's a geometric series because really what we're looking at is, is the, is the function itself in the form of a sub 1 over 1, uh, 1 minus r. Okay, that's the form we're looking for, right? A sub 1 over 1 minus r. It, does it really look like that? In this case, it does. It's 1 over 1 plus x. So uh, r, r in this case is negative x, right? Because it's 1. We wanted this to be 1 minus r, and this is 1 plus x. All right, so now we're going to write this as a uh, power series. I'm going to write it like this. f of x equals our first is 1 then our r so each one's going to be negative x okay so negative x to the 1 um, plus negative x squared which is going to be plus x squared plus negative x cubed which is going to be minus x cubed plus negative x to the fourth which is going to just give me x to the fourth and so on now this could also be written as a sigma notation 
sigma as n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, because we're alternating x to the n. What's the interval of convergence? Well, the interval of convergence is when r negative x, absolute value of ne negative x is less than 1. Well, this is still going to give us the same thing as we had before because the absolute value, okay, so this right here is my interval of convergence, all right? Okay, let's take a look at another one. g of x equals 3 over 1 minus 2x. Now, this again, it is a geometric. It's in the form of a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Uh, a little tricky here, right? This is a geometric with a being equal to 3, and r is going to be 2x. All right, so we're going to write this out. g of x equals, we're going to start at 3 plus 2x. Okay, so we're going to have um, 3 plus 3 times, okay, so this, okay. This 3 here gets multiplied kind of like by everything, right? Because remember that the r is 2x, so we're multiplying 3 times, okay, so we're going to times 2x, right, to get the next one, which is going to be 6x. Then we're going to multiply 2x again, and we're going to get 12x squared. And then we're going to multiply 2x again, and we're going to get 24x cubed. Remember, this is geometric, so we're multiplying r each time. All right, so then we're going to write this as sigma notation, n equals 0 to infinity. Sigma notation, we're going to always go a, a sub n, which is, or, you know, a, so just 3, times r to the n. So now we're going to find our interval of convergence. And to do that, we're going to take our r, absolute value is less than 1. So to solve that, we're going to go between 1 and negative 1. And that's going to be between 1 half and negative 1 half. And this right here is my interval of convergence. Okay, not too bad. Um, that's a power series, guys. Let me just show you a, one more example. Power series here. 1 over 3x. Now this one doesn't quite look like um, a geometric, but it is. We're just missing that minus, so we got to do a <clears throat> we got to do a little bit of math magic, okay? And here's what you do with a little bit of math magic. I'm going to change this to one over one minus one minus three x. See, if, if I change this to one minus one minus three x, then the one minus one will cancel out, give me zero, and then the negative will distribute and give me three x. But now it's in the form that I wanted, which was a sub 1 over 1 minus r, where in this case now, a was is now 1, and r is now 1 minus 3x. Do you see that? I know you're going, ah, how, was I, how was I supposed to know I was supposed to do that? I, I'll never think of that. Well, you will, now that I showed that to you, right? That's why it's an example, guys. All right, h of x equals... Um, we're going to go ahead and write this out. So we're going to go, we're going to start at one and then we're going to multiply by one minus three X. And then we're going to multiply by one minus three X. That's going to be squared. And then we're going to multiply by one minus three X and so forth. So then let's write this in Sigma notation N equals zero to infinity. Uh, one minus three X to the n. All right, that's not too bad. All right, now we're going to find the interval of convergence. All right, so the interval of convergence is we're going to take the absolute value of 1 minus 3x less than 1. So 1 minus 3x is less than 1, but greater than negative 1. And we're going to go and solve this. And that's going to give us x is greater than negative 2 thirds, and x is less than 0. 
Nope, that's not negative 2 thirds, that's positive 2 thirds. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides and divide by negative 3. And this right here is my interval of convergence. All right, guys, so that is power series and determining interval of convergence um, using a geometric power series. We'll see you later for the next video.